Okay, we'll call the planning board meeting to order and first order of business. Are there any corrections or additions to the meetings of February 27th? Barbara, on page seven and page eight, um, as starting at the bottom of page seven, and it refers to um, it switches from Mr. Erico to Mr. Girl's assessment of traffic. I believe all of that from bottom of page seven to top of page eight is Mr. Erico. If somebody could just double check on that. That's, that was my recollection. This should be Mr. Erico instead of Mr. Goral. Could you check that, Lori, on the minutes? Okay. Any other corrections or additions to the minutes? I got a, one question. On uh, page 11, when uh, Mr. Sherman statement at the third from the last paragraph, uh, I wanted to make sure that I, I was wondering, I, I think that that statement is the amendment to the motion, but is um, Maureen's next paragraph part of the motion or is that just a statement of fact? Because the vote was, wasn't taken. <clears throat> Or is that just a clarification? I believe that you're talking about you're talking about um, condition number two. Was there a vote taken on that yeah. condition? Uh, you didn't take a vote because it was a friendly amendment. You accepted the amendment. I know we did, but I just wanted to make sure. I don't think that's part of the amendment. I think it's the statement that was that Mr. Sherman made. Is that you, the way? I mean, you're, you're, are you disagreeing with number two in the wording for the condition? No. Okay, so it's um, the paragraph following that? Yeah, it's, it's Dave Sherman's statement. Would like a letter from the applicant summarizing right. the meeting and what the feedback was and prep. Right, th uh, that statement was not part of the motion. It was a statement that he made. Okay. All right. I just wanted clarification. There is just one. On page six, there is um, the second paragraph, the entire area of the RP that just needs an A in there. Any other corrections or additions? Motion to accept. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Passed. All right. Um, we have received for the meeting tonight a memo from the code enforcement officer regarding Avon Road, a member from the, the fire chief regarding Avon Road. Uh, an emergency ordinance adopted by the Town Council on 313.06, an email from uh, A. Darling regarding Spurwink Woods. The first order of business is a con consent agenda item, the high school athletic field lighting. Um, the Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting an amendment to the school renovation site plan to upgrade the lighting for the athletic field located behind the high school. The Planning Board approved an amendment in October of 2005. However, there was an error in the field size, which requires that the total pole height be increased 10 feet to a total of 70 feet high. I would like to remind everybody that this application is being presented as a con consent agenda item, which typically does not include a presentation by the applicant. If any board member would like a substantive, substantive Discussion of the application, a motion should be made to move the item to the regular agenda. Is there anybody here who would like the item removed? Right. The applicant has provided plans demonstrating that the half 0.5 candle foot maximum light level at the property line will be met. So may we have a motion for the board to consider? A motion. Motion to the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth to amend the school renovation site plan to upgrade the lighting of the athletic field located behind the high school located at 345 Ocean House Road be approved as a consent agenda item. I'll second. All in favor? Okay. Passed. 
Next item on our business, old business, Avon Road private access way permit. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Jim, do you want to present any changes to the plans? Uh, summarize any changes that you've made? Yes, I'll summarize very quickly. Um, the only changes are those which uh, the, rec the engineer, Townsend Reviewing Engineers, recommended and uh, one that Maureen had mentioned uh, in her letter. I'll point them out very quickly to you and then uh, stipulate beforehand, however, that uh, Maureen has not had a chance to actually review those yet. So we are asking for final appro or approvals this evening conditional upon her review of, every of these changes relative to Steve's comments. Very briefly, they entail on this being the final plan that you will end up signing. Uh, we put the cross-section detail of the actual driveway for the 30-foot right-of-way on the plan. We had uh, previously just submitted that as a separate document. Um, it's now part of what the plan will be. Uh, we added a note here regarding um, pursuant to construction trenches that are going to be uh, connecting the public systems for sewer and water are to be a minimum of 10 feet apart. We have ensured that those are 10 feet apart. That's a construction detail. And uh, one of the things that Steve had wanted to make sure, and we put this now on the plan, is that when these two trenches are actually dug to be able to connect to the public systems, uh, the utility systems, that the section approximately 12 to 13 feet wide of Avon Road that will actually be um, dug up in conjunction with connecting those systems will actually, be the surface, the pavement surface will actually be scratched off for that 12 foot wide section, although only two trenches will be on either side. And then when it's repaved, typically the following day, instead of having two small trenches with pavement on the top of them, you're going to have a uniform section over that whole 12 foot space. Uh, it just makes for a lot easier flow uh, once the uh, pavement is put back into place. We've added a, uh, a note here talking about the separations, and uh, then we've shown this actual 30-foot uh, wide right-of-way. Right Excuse me, Jim, could you speak a little bit more loudly or use yes. the microphone? Thank you. Okay, new microphone, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. That's really the only change. Is that a clip-on microphone you can put on you to... No? I don't think so. Um, new technology. Uh, so in any case, just as a very quick refresher, what we are looking at is the private access way waiver regarding the 30-foot wide right-of-way with the hammerhead. This is the uh, depiction that you see on the far left. These are both the same lots, by the way. Uh, this is what we had talked about last time. Uh, this is what we would actually have to uh, construct on the site uh, if we were to adhere specifically to the regulation relative to a hammerhead. This is primarily for fire safety you would have, or emergency vehicle safety. You have that letter from the fire chief that states that it's not necessary, uh, that uh, he indeed agrees that Avon Road is close enough to the locus that it's not going to prov or, or, uh, uh, prevent any emergency vehicles from being able to service the, the house itself. This is also the scenario where the house would have to be tilted 90 degrees to the road, literally facing the uh, Paper Street right away, and then the abutting house that's right over here. This is just, it's an overkill scenario, essentially. So this is what we're asking for the waiver from. Uh, the 30-foot wide way, or right of way that we're looking for uh, the board to approve relative to us meeting the, the um, intent of the regulation is that which you see here. When we were on the site walk, we recognized several different clumps of trees that the uh, developer would like to be able to uh, keep, both in this section and in this section. Uh, what this is going to do is literally have the driveway in the middle of it uh, yet it still conforms to the regulations as far as meeting the 30-foot width for the actual right-of-way. Uh, Rusty also has the uh, revised maintenance agreement pursuant to Mike Hill's um, uh, comments earlier. He will also provide that to, uh, to Maureen to take a look at. This is, again, the actual plan that you're looking at. It shows that 30-feet wide right-of-way, adds all the notes that, uh, from Maureen and from the engineer's comments, and that, in a nutshell, is what we're looking for. Thank you. Uh, we have scheduled a public hearing for this evening, so uh, the public hearing is now open. If anyone would like to make any comments, please come up to the podium, state your name and address, and say whatever you have to say. Hi, Carla Bernstein, 19 Trendy Road. Uh, my back property directly abuts this lot. I'm going to take one second and look at this because I haven't had a chance just so I can see where the driveway goes. I want to verify first that there's no more talk of 
continuing the paper road all the way through to Trundy? Is that not going to happen? There was never any proposal to, okay. to continue it all the way to Trundy. There was originally some consideration of putting the driveway in the paper street. Okay. But only for the distance. Only from Avon. And that has been discontinued as well. Okay. So the paper street's still there, but no one's proposing to do anything with okay, it. Okay, so driveway just from Trundy. I mean from Avon. Yes. And there would have to be a variance from this board for the frontage on Avon, is that correct? Yeah, for this lot? Right. The lot is an existing lot of record. It's an original subdivision from the 1920s, mm -hmm. 1911. And it meets all the requirements for a non-conforming lot except road frontage. It's supposed okay. to have 125 feet of road frontage, and it doesn't. Okay. So you can get a private access way permit to, uh, to, to meet the frontage requirement. My only two comments, thank you for answering the questions, is that were you to approve this, which obviously is neighbors enjoying a nice wooded lot, we hope you don't, but were you to, we noticed at one Avon Road that they basically completely clear cut the lot. It's very unattractive. The house is a big wall next to Trundy Road. It doesn't look nice at all. I don't know if you have any input into leaving some trees on this lot. I'd hate to see it completely clear cut. That other lot looks awful right now. And, um, you know, I just hope that they'd be courteous of the neighbors when they first surveyed this property. There were surveyors walking all over my property doing the survey. They'd never asked permission to come on the property. I looked out my window and there they were. So I would hope that the developer would use some courtesy in building these lots. And I would really like you to consider the tree issue. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to make a comment? Well, I was concerned about the tree issue also. Do you want to come up and state your name and address? Thank you. Hi, I'm Jackie Robinson, 17 Trundy Road, right next to Bernstein's, and we share the driveway. And I was also concerned about the clear cutting of the lot. Uh, it's, it's very distressing to see what happened on 1 Avon Road when all those big, beautiful trees were taken down. And I think, you know, it, it was probably unnecessary to take that many trees down to put that house up. And it, it, I agree that it's not a very attractive place at this point with, with all the trees gone. And uh, I'm hoping they won't do that. To, the, to this lot because it also is right up behind our, our property. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Nancy Entwistle to Avon Road. And I, you know, I j again, I don't really have, know anything really about the driveway or, you know, I think that aesthetically, you know, we're just concerned about, you know, the street. And again, you know, when you, when the board approves for these new houses in old neighborhoods, you know, I think you just need to take into consideration the neighbors that live there and um, the noise that goes on and, you know, the distraction within the neighborhood. So, you know, that, you know, I have had to, I've had to go over and talk to the people that are working on the house several times about litter and things like that. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Public hearing is now closed. Okay. Um, questions for Mr. Fisher? Jim, during the site walk, you talked about the intent of, uh, of, the, uh, of the plans that there would be trees saved. Are there specific notes on the plan relative to which ones are intended to be saved? Uh, there's no notes on the plan because we don't actually have a physical house plan yet. Okay. So to the extent that that house could be smaller or larger, we're not yet sure. It will, and there is a note on the plan st stipulating this, uh, have to be obvious any improvements the, the stick built house or any sheds or anything else that are brought into the property must be located and can only be located in within the building envelope mm -hmm. toward that end there are several clumps of trees that we noticed on the site walk up front uh, along the sides of the property 
and then quite a number in the back that are over that topographic <coughs> rise as we saw uh, that do not need to come down. The purpose, one of the main purposes of asking for this particular scenario is uh, not only for the waiver of the private right of way uh, or the private access way, but to preserve as many trees up front as possible. I'd like to segue in what Paul has asked. Um, is it not possible to put them on the plans so the ones you absolutely know you're not going to be taking down, and then a note to the effect that um, as many trees as are there that can be maintained will be maintained, but can they actually be put on the plans? We did talk about this at some length when we were out at the site. Sure. Um, we can certainly do that. The only thing I would caution is that keeping in mind that in the course of excavation for any type of house, whether it's on this property or any others, there are in some cases um, root systems of trees that are going to be disturbed within that building envelope area. To be able to identify a particular tree or clump of trees that's outside of that envelope that would, we would want to save and have every intention of doing so, if there is a major root system because there's ledge everywhere and some of those roots instead of going down go wherever they want to go, if one of those root systems happens to be disturbed in the course of excavation in the building envelope, that tree stating that we're going to try to preserve it could end up dying within you know, a few months to a year or 10, you know, whatever it might be. The point is we really don't have a whole lot of control over that other than stating that anything outside of the building envelope just is, has to stay there because we can't really do anything about that area. Questions? Other questions? Wait. There was one other thing that um, uh, Steve Harding had on his, and I, I couldn't hear you well enough to know whether you talked about it or not. And that was, maybe it was somebody that wrote it, about the, oh, the stormwater runoff. Um, so, Let's see, Bob Malley suggested that the drive be shaped to discourage the runoff from the roadway from entering the site through the drive. Yes. And I, did you talk about that or, or not? Um, I didn't actually mention it, but that note is on the plan. Um, it, it's right here where it talks about the area of the driveway at its, con at its connection to the pavement of Avon Road should be slightly raised above the existing topography in order to ensure that stormwater runoff from Avon Road does not flow onto the locust via the driveway. It's actually a protection for the lot, which we appreciate. Thank you. Dave? Jim, I have one question right relative to the building envelope. Um, the drawing on to you, just to you, uh, right there, is, is that the building envelope or is that what you expect to be the outline of the foundation? Uh, this section right here is what we expect to be the outline of the foundation based on a that uh, Rusty Pillsbury actually has. That is not to indicate, and I don't want to give any indication here that uh, it's absolute, because the building, the house hasn't actually been designed yet. The principal purpose for this uh, drawing right here is to show that the orient in this scenario, or this scenario as it were, uh, with this outline of the house, is an indication that we would like to have the house uh, facing, as do all the rest of the houses, the actual public right-of-way, or Avon Street, Avon Road, as opposed to this example, where in this situation here with the private access way thus configured, we would have to have a house that again faces, is 90 degrees to the road and faces into the neighbor's house, which we don't want. The actual building envelope, to answer your question, Dave, is this dot-dashed line that comes all the way like this, or essentially follows this line right here. Right, I would. I think I might like to suggest to the people who had questions relative to take a further look at that. Because technically you could put a house anywhere in that building envelope that you have. And that anything in that area may possibly be disturbed as tree growth. When we did walk the site, there was a lot of discussion about trees. And I, and I think the builder has an interest in saving as many of them as he possibly can. So I think that's you know, one of the things that we were concerned about when we walked the site. And also.
Anybody have anything else? I, could we um, have a motion? But I, I would like to ask that there be an additional item added to the motion, and that is that a note be added to the plan stating that existing trees outside the that every effort will be made to preserve um, existing trees outside the building envelope, and that be added to the plans. I don't know how anybody else feels about that. Does anybody have any reaction to that, or does anybody want to? I, my, my only comment is, Barbara, is I, I, I agree with you, and I think having the, with the site walk, it was absolutely intent that we wanted to maximize, you know, keeping as many trees there as possible. I, but I, I do agree with Jim from the standpoint of there are no guarantees. I mean, they, they could disturb the root system of every tree on that lot. And the reality is, is you know, four months from now, there might not be a living tree left on it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not, it's hard to say. Well, that's why I'm suggesting that we add it as a note to the plans, yeah, that do. every attempt will be made to preserve the trees, because we want, I think people want to know that you're going to, the builder's going to do this in good faith, and that we're doing it in good faith. Yeah. We're not asking for a guarantee, but I think we're asking, I'm asking that it be added to the, as a note to the plans. Yeah. And that's no why I, I just, I'm just, I'm not sure what, I, well, other than just identifying intent, I, you're, you're right, there, there, there won't be any guarantees. No, but if you don't add intent, then, excuse me, worry. The problem is then we're in a situation where we have to prove intent. One of the things you could look at is, you know, even if the applicant doesn't disturb root systems, what happens with a lot of the really large houses is they tend to regrade the entire lot. And the regrading goes far beyond the building envelope because it's not a building. One of the things you could look at is limiting the applicant from re changing the grade outside the building envelope, which would push the, the building inside the envelope more tightly because they'd have to they'd have to reach original grade by the time they hit the edge of the building envelope. That gives the trees outside the envelope a little better chance. <coughs> I'm, I'm not sure at this site. Oh, go ahead. <coughs> um, I'm Rusty Pilsman, I'm the developer. Um, I think, to back up a little bit, one of the numerous reasons to go this route here is there is a cluster of trees right here that we would love to preserve and it would just once the house is done the house would look like it always had been there and that's the goal it will, yeah we'll make every attempt to save a tree believe me we want i want to keep as many as we can the reality is you just don't know until you start digging backfilling i understand uh, we, we want to put it down as low as we can to make it look like all the other homes grade as shallow grade as we can but it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's difficult to make a guarantee. But I would like to preserve as many as I can, so. What about Maureen's suggestion? And yeah, do you have any comment on <coughs> suggestion by Maureen? Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, the way the topography goes is, is you know, we're, we're probably gonna end up keeping the topography on this side, I believe, similar, because we're gonna be trying to, you know, go as much of a daylight basement there as possible, so we're trying to keep that great as much as possible. Um, obviously the grade is going to have to go up to the, the garage. This is the garage portion here. Um, I, don't, I mean, I guess I would have to have a little bit more, uh, elaborate a little bit more on the grade. I mean, to what extent do you hold back the grade? I guess my thought was outside of where the driveway is that you, you would be able to, you would have to reach original grade by the time you hit the edge of the building envelope. Um, that's a good thought, and usually, it, in many cases, it's it's not difficult to do that. In this particular case, I think effort every I would like to think that, and I think I can speak for Rusty saying every effort will certainly be made to be able to preserve as much of that as possible because that's the essence of the aesthetics of the lot. One of the issues that we're going to have, however, is given that there's ledge everywhere, and particularly what we saw out there, especially in, in this section right back here where it was quite exposed, we know that there's quite a bit of ledge on the property. In order to be able to excavate, there is going to be, you know, we're gonna end up hitting some ledge somewhere. 
if in order to be able to preserve the integrity of the overall site with respect to that ledge, if we end up, end up uh, putting the foundation of that house slightly higher than a typical foundation might be, then there's going to be a necessity from a stormwater perspective to be able to grade away from that foundation, albeit slightly, but still grade away from it. Otherwise, we're actually encouraging, <coughs> by keeping the current grade, stormwater to flow toward the house, potentially, which we definitely don't want to do. Uh, the grading can be very minimal in order to be able to uh, segue that flow away from the house, but it could, in some cases, because of the narrowness of the building envelope, uh, actually have to go into the building or outside of the building envelope, not anywhere near to the property lines, uh, because we do have 25 feet in order to be able to play with that. But it could go, you know, five, six, seven, eight feet, something to that effect. Now we're not looking at grading, you know, bringing in truckloads of grading, but enough that would actually, again, segue in this section, for instance, right over here, across the back. Not so much on this end because the grade, the overall grade of the lot comes down this way. The point being, you know, we can sink a foundation deeper, but that inc incurs, you know, going deeper with excavation into the ledge, um, you know, doing any type of uh, rock excavation, and in some cases, if we don't have to go there, we'd rather not. It's sort of the lesser of two evils to be able to put a, a little bit of grading on the lot as opposed to going down too deep and then uh, having to blast. And that, that additional grading is no guarantee that you're going to disturb or preserve the trees. I just know Maureen's correct saying that the, the less you do, the more, more likely you're going to preserve the trees, but there's no. You could still disturb the roots and leave the grade exactly the way it is, and then you've lost them. So I'm not, I guess I'm comfortable with Barbara's language to say you're just going to make every effort to preserve the existing trees and you do the best you can under the circumstances. I think that is the intent of the development. <coughs> I was suggesting an actual, requiring an actual note on the plan. I have no problem with that. I mean, I'm prepared to make a motion unless there's some more discussion. I guess I'd agree with you on the tree issue. But I, I also want to one, one more comment, if I could. Looking at the topo of it and the building envelope, on the rear, it's almost impossible to build in that section anyway. So the it chances of the yeah. building here, is, you know, I, I doubt that they'd ever be able to put a house there. So uh, from that standpoint, they really are limited, even though the building envelope is based on the setbacks. This, when we walked that lot, I think it was very steep in the back. So mm. The chances are they'd ever put a house back there. I, I can't see how you do it. I don't see any, any reason. But I, I would agree with the, uh, Peter on his last comment. I just had a quick question about the litter issue. Uh, is that coming off the work project, or is it what's on the work project? OK. I'm, is that from the wind, or is it from? OK. I'm sure that's something you can address. Let's see if you could talk to I mean, I know Shore Acres can get pretty windy out there yeah. sometimes. <laughs> I am just bringing it, the developer may not be aware that that's going on. And oh, yeah, no, I, we, we're, we're, gathering, we're gathering the <coughs> trash daily. I mean, sometimes it's just been a real windy, windy period of time over there, and we're doing the best we can to keep the site as clean as we can. Well, when I was there, there was a can, like a, one of those big things, those big trash. Oh, dumpster? Covered. The dumpster. Yeah, the dumpster. Yeah. It wasn't covered. Yeah, the, and I went over there and talked to them. It was a windy day. Yeah, they're, they're, um, Construction workers. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> you, you do what you can, but you know, it's, it's my other family. I mean, you you try to. Absolutely, and the dumpsters usually. The dumpsters are usually covered on on transport. They're not usually covered at the site, but we you know we we're making every effort we can to keep the site clean. Going to the dump a couple of times a week, uh, just trying to keep the place picked up. Maybe you, maybe you need to communicate with the neighbor just to see if she, if, she, if she does have issues in the future, she can get a hold of you some way. Just Absolutely. I'm, I'm sure it's not something that the Pillsbury wants going on out there. Yeah. Nope. But at the same time, if you can get a hold of them, at least you can let them know that it's, it's happening. Yeah. I understand. I, I have a house being built right next to myself right now, and I have, there, there's plenty of it. I, I see it myself. So, and, and <coughs> we're gathering it on a regular basis. So we'll do the best we can to keep it controlled. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. You all set? Um, I'd like to make a motion for the board to consider. I move that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, 
the application of Graham Pillsbury of the Early Bird Group for a private access way for, lot, for a lot located at 5 Avon Road be approved, subject to the following conditions. Uh, that the, one, that the plans be revised to address the comments of the town enge engineer in his letter dated February 13, 2006. Two, that a note be added to the plan to the plans that prohibits the placement of principal or accessory structures outside the building envelope. Three, that the road maintenance agreement be revised per the comments of the town attorney in his letter dated March 14, 2006 and signed by the applicant. Four, that the plans and documents be revised per the above conditions prior to the recording of the private access way approval. And number five, that a note be added to the plans indicating that every effort will be made to preserve the trees outside the building envelope. Second. All in favor? Favor. Yes. I was just going to ask you to reverse condition four and five. The order? I, uh, I'll amend my motion to reflect that. Okay. Uh, motion has been made, seconded, with the reversal of four and five. Second? Second. All in favor? Okay, approved. Rusty, thank you for talking you. to your crew about please keeping things very tidy. Okay, we have one more item of business before we adjourn, and that is our next planning board meeting, which is April the 18th, is on school vacation week. Can everybody here make it that night? Or is somebody going to be out of town? Or do we need to change the meeting? No, I thought we already had changed the meeting. Well, it doesn't have to be changed if we can all make it. I will be out of town. You had talked about changing it, and then you decided to wait until you saw what the, your plans were, and then you were going to set up the date. Oh, I'm, I'm I definitely not going to be here. Okay. How many else? How many? Jack, you're not going to be here? I will not be here. The 18th. I will, I will be here. I will. No, I will be back. We don't know about Dave, we don't know about John. Um, Is Dave, Dave, are you going to be here the 18th? Are you going to be going? Be gonna be here. And, uh, well, we got to pull one other person. Is the April meeting an agenda, though, that we want to try to get everybody together? Yes. <laughs> um, I thought we had moved to the 24th, but... Well, you know, I would appreciate if we move it to a non-Monday. Yeah. Yeah. What about Wednesday the 26th? How is Wednesday the 26th for everybody? That, it's usually the room that's the restriction, Maureen. Well, well, Maureen said that 26 the might 25th work. is a Tuesday, which is when is, excuse me, the 25th, which would be the fourth Tuesday, is when, you, of course, you'd want to move it to, but mm -hmm. zoning board, that's zoning board night if they have a meeting. And by the time we know whether or not they have a meeting, it's too late for us to do what we need to do in terms of noticing, et cetera. So um, we could look at the Wednesday before, which is April 26, which clears your schedule. Yep. How is the 26th for everybody who's here? It's fine with me. It's okay with Peter? me. Peter? Works with okay. me. Okay. Then the 26th it is. Okay, good. The 7th. And I will, I'm pretty sure the room's available, but if it isn't, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, so would you, let's see, will you contact Dave and um, John? I will send no, no, stuff to everyone. Okay, good. Oh, good. We want the whole world to know. All right. 26th. The 26th, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Okay. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> we, uh, we're going to deal with this at a workshop.